In a previous video, we looked at array formulas. More specifically, we've looked at how to transpose our data so that we can filter it for questions that we don't want to have in the exam anymore. Our data is prepared now. It's in the right way, so let's filter it. We can go to the filter button, select our data, and say, hey, we don't want all of the data, we don't want all of the questions, we only want to have the, uh, everything beside the second row. But unfortunately, we still have the same results because we have transposed everything, including the last column, which is now the last row. So don't worry, you think, we can just delete it. That doesn't work. You cannot change part of an array formula. It's impossible once you have selected an area that's meant for an array, you cannot delete cells in it. And this is good because you don't want to accidentally overwrite part of your array by hitting the keyboard with your elbow. But in this case, we don't want to have the final column anymore. We want to add new calculations. So what we need to do is use the same region again, but with one row less and put the formula in, the array formula in again. So the only way we can delete the values is delete everything, delete the entire array formula, and then paste it again using one row less. It's a bit cumbersome. If you, so if you want to change an array, you have to change everything, but there we have it. So now we can add the, fu the sum function ourselves based on the transposed data. We just add a sum of the entire column. There we go, no worries. And we drag it. Yep, there it is. So now we can filter, right? We're entirely prepared. We go to filter, we remove the second question from the list of questions, and it works. And frankly, it doesn't. The calculation, even though the row is filtered out, is still calculating on the entire column. So we cannot use a function to filter because it will still calculate the entire column, unfortunately. I hope you're screaming right now. I really hope that on the other side of the video, you are saying this, hey, but I know why this isn't working, because formulas are not for analysis. Formulas are for calculation. If you want to do analysis, you should use something else. For instance, a pivot table, indeed. So, okay, 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 I hear you. Let's try to do our analysis with a pivot table. We get rid of the formulas, they are not for analysis. We get rid of the filter and we select all of the data and put it into a pivot table. Whoop. Filter can go. We select all of the data. Oh yeah, I've changed the student numbers into one, two, three, four instead of the very long student numbers because that will make the pivot table a bit too big. Let's go, we add a pivot table. Yep, there we go. Select a pivot table and we put it on a new worksheet that I have just made. Select the data and we have a pivot table. So now we can filter, right? We can say we want all of the students. These are the student numbers now. All the sums of all the students. Da, 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 da. Click, click, click. Yep. And we can add a filter on what questions to use. Super easy. If you've seen the week about the pivot tables, you know how to do this. We can just select what questions we want. However, as you see, it's pretty hard to compare the different scenarios with each other. Now this is 55. I change a value, it changes. But what I would like to have is have the scenarios side by side. One row for the exam with question two included and one row for the exam without question two, without everything swapping all the time. If I do that, the only way I could do that is to make two pivot tables with two different filters. And then of course we're running into the duplication problem again. And there is another downside of using pivot tables for this analysis. If we go to the table field settings down here, there's a limited number of functions we can use. So there's sum, average, min, max, but not all of Excel's, I think, 350 plus built-in functions are there. There's a limited set of functions that we can use. So if we're summing the exam results, that's fine. But if we want to take different quartals, for instance, we want to use the, minim the median, or we want to use the mode, then there's no way that we can do that with a pivot table. 
So in conclusion, yes, formulas are for calculation and not for analysis. However, there are some limitations to what you can do with pivot tables because they don't support everything. And also they don't really support scenario analysis in which I want to compare two different filters with each other. And that's where you're going to need array formulas.